above all, this is a war of propaganda. And I would think almost nothing one reads in the Western press about the invasion of Ukraine is to be trusted. That was the voice of filmmaker John Pilger discussing the Western media's fog of war regarding the war in Ukraine. Every day when I scan the media, I I look at the source. It's Ukrainian intelligence. He was speaking this past July with Yandin Latu, chief news editor for the South China Morning Post, about the role that the Western media was playing in what was clearly a deepening war by proxy between the U.S. and Russia. The propaganda operation in Ukraine is quite brilliant. Uh, They've managed to... uh, invent a chemical warfare attack when there wasn't one. They've managed to, uh, um, to, to, uh, to keep out of the, uh, the Western media the fact that so much of, of Ukraine is infested, if not run by, but infested with, with the true extremists, fascists, neo-Nazis, they are called. Americans favored U.S. support for Ukraine at the time that is, in July of 2022. However, that support has been fading fast. A poll just released by the Chicago Council on Global Affairs indicates that more Americans now favor an end to U.S. support than support continuing it, as government officials have put it, for as long as it takes. And Americans are deeply divided on who they believe is winning the war at present, with a plurality believing there are no winners. Among the key findings in the survey, an equal percentage of Americans say Russia and Ukraine have the advantage in the current conflict, each at 26%. And a plurality believes that neither country has the advantage. That's at 46%. Separately, Americans were asked whether Washington should support Ukraine, quote, as long as it takes, close quote. That was down to 48% from 58% in July or whether Washington should urge Ukraine to settle for peace as soon as possible, that's now at 47%, up from 38% in July. In terms of correlation with media, viewers of MSNBC are most likely to say Ukraine has the advantage at 48%. That's followed by viewers of NBC at 36%, public television at 33%, and CNN at 32%. Only 26% of Fox News viewers believe that Ukraine has the advantage. The poll indicated that Democrats most strongly support an aggressive policy towards Russia across the board. 83% polled favor increasing economic and diplomatic sanctions from their current levels. 76% support sending additional arms and military supplies to the Kiev government. One rather frightening statistic at least one-third of Democrats, Republicans, and Independents said they'd favor sending U.S. troops to, quote, help the Ukrainian government defend itself against Russia, closed quote. What to remember here is the U.S. doesn't give a damn about Ukraine. Ukraine is simply a pawn in this. But the object, as the U.S. Defense Secretary is, and I paraphrase him, it is to destroy the Russian Federation. That's been known for a long time. That is probably the most dangerous project in the world today uh, because the Russians are not going to allow that. Since the beginning of the war, the U.S. and the EU have done everything to interfere with news coming into American audiences from the Russian side. RT has been outlawed in some EU countries and knocked off of most platforms in the U.S. But Pilger points out that it's important for Americans to understand that there are two points of view if they're going to understand what is likely to happen as the war develops. Well, uh, if you see it from the Russian side, without taking the side of Russia, it looks rather different. Uh, There was Russian troops, as you may remember, up to February, massing uh, on the Ukrainian border, and they eventually invaded. That was the news on this side of the border. On the other side of the border, there were 60,000 Ukrainian troops who were massing on the line of contact right across Donbass. Now, Donbass, as far as the Russians are concerned, is, is the last stepping stone 
uh, you're close by Russia, you have a strategic advantage over Russia. Everything in modern Russian history, uh, and in not so modern history, tells us that the Russians will never uh, tolerate this, that they regard this as a threat, and they have much of their history to justify it. In any discussion of geopolitics, history has to be part of one's analysis, even if it's not overt. It has to be understood. It has, there has to be a basic knowledge of it uh, to understand why things are happening uh, or what is likely to happen. Our ignorance of Russia, like our ignorance of China in the West, allows none of that historical sense of how people see the threat and how political forces see the threat. For KPFK, I'm Don DeBar.